All right, we're playing uh, with the band today this morning in our chemist corner. You doing okay with that? Vuvuzuelas are longer and straight. I saw this pink thing from over there and it looked like a vuvuzuela, but I mistook a French horn. I don't know. It's been weird this morning. We have Jesse Miller here with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good. Can't wait to see how you make this science. Yeah. Well, okay, so it's all about sound, right? And, okay. And just briefly, because we don't get. You get I could talk forever about sound specifically, but what is sound, right? It's it's actually a pressure wave. Okay, so things uh, make a, they'll vibrate and they'll cause the air molecules to move in a, in a wave pattern, or the pressure wave moves in a wave pattern. Our eardrums vibrate in sympathy with that, and our brain interprets that as sound. Okay, huh. so it's all about your brain, right? Um, so. It, not to get you know, sound travels about a thousand feet per second in air. It actually travels faster in solids, and it doesn't travel at all in a vacuum. You need to have some sort of medium for right. it to travel in. So, um, if we take like, for instance, a string instrument. String instruments are all basically the same. And this is a banjo, um, but they're all basically the same. They have different strings that ha that are that are bound on each end, mm -hmm. so that when you pluck it, the string vibrates. That vibrate moves the air. Vibration mm -hmm. moves the air and it pounds into our eardrum and we hear the sound. Okay? Right. And you can, uh, the different size strings, uh, different lengths of strings will give you different different sounds. In, in the case of a, a stringed instrument, they use thicker strings so that you end up getting, and you tighten it in order to cause it to go Up higher or, or lower. And it all has to do with how fast the string is vibrating. Okay. Okay. So, um, in a, in a, boy, this is really echoing off this yeah. drum here. I'll hold on to it. So on a, uh, on like a uh, guitar or a violin or a cello or anything like that, you have a, a big body that has a hole in it, and that's a resonating chamber, so you can hear it. Banjo is a little bit different because it has a drum. On top. Okay, on top, right. which makes it give that funny sound. That twang. That twang, and that's because of this drum that resonates. So if we have a string at a certain length and it makes a certain sound, if we want it to go up an octave, okay, we need a half. What's that? Shorten the string? Shorten the string. You can shorten the string by touching it, right? So here we go here, and if I touch it in just the right, if I make exactly halfway in between mm -hmm. the two things, it goes up an octave. Oh. Okay, so if you half the length, you double the frequency. Got it. Okay. And then we hear that. It's the same note, right? Uh, you know, I can't sing. Anyway. You're and dying then, to play that, aren't you? If you have it, no. If you have it again, oh wow, you get, you get the, the next octave. Double octave. And so, in between there, of course, in Western music, we divide it into a, a twelve half, a twelve note, chromatic system, and you can get all the notes in between there. Jesse. Yes. Strap it on. We're going to take a break, and you're going to give us a little. Banjo <laughs> no, I'm not. Come, come no. on. Yes, come banjo on. and a song to go with. <laughs> we'll see. Don't By miss her it. Majesty's <laughs> command. You have to do it. We'll be right back.